Hi, I figured we'd start a, a small video series on uh, an explanation and a description as to what a lot of people use every day but might not be entirely familiar with, and that is uh, microwave ovens. Uh, very basic microwave ovens. Everyone has one in their home. Uh, but a few people, um, some, uh, don't necessarily understand exactly some of the physics and some of the engineering behind them. So I figured I'd uh, go and spend some time and go over this. A little bit about my background. Uh, I got a graduate degree in uh, data communications in 1993, 802.11, Wi-Fi, wireless networks, uh, way back then. And uh, believe it or not, at the time, after I did my thesis and graduated, uh, nobody wanted it. <laughs> nobody wanted uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, for talk about that, that for various reasons. But anyways, over that time period, though, I did a lot of work on microwaves, communication, interference, and uh, microwave ovens, and I figured I'd share some of that uh, work with you. It's still current and up-to-date today. Uh, one other thing, I'm going to be using a special uh, notebook for this. This is a Rocketbook One. Uh, it is a non-microwavable uh, version of the book. Uh, a friend of mine is a co-founder of the company, a uh, very bright guy. Uh, he uh, yeah, co-founded and invented this uh, notebook, and uh, he's excellent at delivering products. Uh, we can talk at length about that. Actually, I'm going to do another video and evaluate uh, talking about the, this notebook, and I hope you'll uh, join me for that. Uh, if there's other interest in some of the engineering or more in-depth explanations, uh, give me some feedback, and I'll definitely post some more videos when I get some time. Okay, so let's get started. Now, first off, microwave oven. Uh, everybody pretty much has one of those uh, in their home. Uh, what it consists of is a RF oscillator and antennas and usually there's an antenna on the top or an antenna on the side there's a carousel probably at the bottom to rotate your food inside so most people know that uh, some of the details of what goes on here though are that the frequency of a microwave of a radio signal or vibration of the cycles per second is 2.45 gigahertz 2 billion 450 million hertz what you represent that as a sinusoid looks something like this okay that's what the wave actually looks like if you could draw it out and there's a period, a time period, that it takes to complete one cycle in seconds. Cycle time, or the period is 1 over the frequency, in this case 1 over 2.45 gigahertz, gives you 4.08 times 10 to the negative 10 seconds. Or, if you don't think that's fast, 0 0.00000000408 seconds. Uh, once again, if you don't think that's significantly fast, verifications, we could talk about at length of what that actually means. It happens to be, though, the good old frequency, resonant frequency of water, or H2O, which, which a lot of people know, I mean, is that microwaves predominantly cook best uh, when there's water involved, or anything you put in there is wet or has water in it. Uh, it will cook, it will heat up other items if they're conductive or they have an antenna in them, which I'll describe to you uh, in a minute. We can talk about that at length. But anyways, uh, a little bit about water. Uh, water is a compound, which is a well, basic chemistry is a covalent bond. Basically, what that means is that electrons are shared in the outer shell. Every atom has shells of electrons. There's an outermost shell, which is the easiest to strip and remove electrons from. And uh, electrons, as you know, related to radio waves, electricity, and everything else. Um, the outer shell wants to get a uh, minimum filling of eight, all shells, eight to fulfill, uh, eight electrons. Uh, the oxygen is missing two, so it finds two hydrogens somewhere. And they attach, basically, and they share this outer shell. So the oxygen thinks it has eight, and the hydrogen has fulfilled in its inner, inner, innermost ring and has two. But anyways, this is a satisfied, stable molecule, and it actually assumes this form. There's a specific distance between here, here, and has a specific shape. It makes water a very powerful, a very significant uh, compound substance on Earth. But it also happens to have a resonant frequency of 2.45 gigahertz because of this chemical, physical makeup, and its structure. When it's bombarded with microwaves at this frequency, this period, this wavelet, it begins to shake. The electrons begin to shake. The electrons shaking in and out of their shells, uh, expanding and contracting through the shells, creates heat, okay, which you could call friction, but it's actually heat. You could talk at length about that too, as well, but that's the basic idea of how the microwave works. So basics, radio basics. Uh, propagation speed of any wave, radio wave, is the frequency times the wavelength. In this case, the frequency of radio waves in a vacuum, which is the best you can get, space, is always 299,792,458 meters per second. It's the speed of light in a vacuum. The wavelength is the speed, which in this case is the speed of light, divided by 2.45 gigahertz, and it gives us a wavelength of 0 0.122 meters, or 12.2 centimeters, or 4.1 seven inches. 
Now you could take your mobile app out and show what that is, or you could take a rule or whatever. I've saved you the trouble and showed you that this is the actual wavelength that you could see it of a radio wave inside your microwave oven. To receive microwaves, radio signals from your radio in your car, your serious radio antenna, uh, your cell phone, uh, optimally, for gain, you need to have a quarter of a wavelength. You need to have a quarter of a wavelength type of antenna, something equivalent to that. Different types of antenna. There's in general a quarter wavelength antenna for minimum efficiency, a half wavelength or a full length. Or a patch antenna, which is on your like mobile phone in your house or even one in your cell phone now. Uh, they, because of the, because of the frequencies, they can get the antennas very small. Um, the spectrum of what the radio wave actually looks like in terms of the frequencies, the components of it, all radio waves are composed of frequencies, uh, amplitudes and frequencies. And this particular thing here, this is called a sync, which represents what a radio wave would look like, or any signal for that matter. The amplitude is on this axis here, and the, fr or the, f the frequency, that's the, actually the power of the frequency, the power component, the total power of that frequency, and the signal is on this axis. The frequencies themselves are represented here along this axis, so if the center frequency is 2.45 gigahertz here, we have other unwanted frequencies. Nothing's perfect. You can't generate a perfect signal, usually. Um, and there's other we'll call them parasitic signals, uh, frequencies in there that make the total power. So if your microwave or your signal is 800 watts, so you have an 800 watt microwave, all this that spreads out to infinity will equal 800 watts. You want as much of that 800 watts as this center frequency as you can get. These side bands, these cutoff points here, are called the half power points. This is where like half the power in here is accumulated at your half power point would be for your signal. You want that as narrow as possible. The narrower and cleaner this sink, clearly defined, the better the signal. Okay? It's a close, this is communication grade, a perfect sink like this is a communication grade signal. The best microwave I tested in 1993 was called the Sharp Carousel. It had an excellent signal. Um, most microwaves today have a pretty good signal, uh, pretty pretty clean spectrum. Uh, as opposed to some of the microwaves back in the 80s and 90s, I tested, I remember, a Gold Star microwave. Here you have the center frequency, and you have amplitudes, I mean, on all the other frequencies, quite considerable, even hot, much greater than the center frequency. And you have all these other frequencies, uh, and it's jitter, and the thing is going back and forth, it's sweeping. It heated foods, uh, it heated, it did its job, but this is a very messy uh, magnetron. Uh, in it. Uh, and anyways, that's microwaves vary uh, as much as automobile performance or anything else in terms of the cost and efficiency. Uh, one of the other things that determine how your microwave works is the resonant characteristics of the microwave itself. The dimensions of the chamber are specifically measured out and designed such that the antenna placement is a function of the wavelength of the inside of the chamber. You want maximum efficiency for this, these signals to bounce around in there as you rotate your food through it to transfer the maximum amount of power. So the resonant chamber or cavity uh, is optimized for the dimensions of the chamber are equal to some function of the wavelength. So this concludes our preliminary discussion on microwaves and communication, and I look forward to you in another video.